your vet online and welcome to today's tutorial today we're going to be talking all about laminitis in horses and it's one of those tricky little topics this time of year spring is sprung the days are warming up and combined with all this rain that we're getting it is the perfect conditions to grow grass of course and of course um, with the abundance of grass growth it's absolutely imperative and crucial that we act now to ensure that our ponies and those horses that are prone to laminitis are kept safe so in this tutorial we're just going to focus on some of the preventative strategies that you can take to help hopefully stop this from happening and also how to treat it if it does occur so um, those in particular the first aid treatments um, so that you can have ponies that aren't in pain now if you haven't met me before I'm Dr Lee Davidson and I've been a veterinarian for over 20 years so we're getting on a bit now and I run Your Vet Online, and we're Australia's first 24-7 telemedicine online vet consulting service. So you can get veterinary advice 24-7. Now, every Tuesday on either Facebook or our YouTube channel, we do hold these tutorials. And they, we have different topics each week. And at the first of the month, um, on the first Tuesday of each month, we let you have free for all so you can ask any questions you like but that doesn't mean you can't ask questions today so if you do have a question you want to have answered regarding laminitis in your horses and ponies please pop it in the comment section and i'll make sure to answer it probably at the end because it's much easier then anyway say hello let me know you're there i um can't actually see in this sort of format we i use a system called be live and it doesn't tell me who's online which is a bit of a pain because i can't say hello directly so you'll just have to say hello to me all right let's get right to it then what exactly is laminitis well laminitis is the term that we give for inflammation of the structures of the hoof wall, which well, the structures that connect the hoof wall to the actual pedal bone. So I do have a little hoof with me here. And actually, I do have a picture too. So we might just pop this one up and see if we can get this one to show. Um, let me see here. This is going to be naughty for me. And we'll see. We can just do this. That's what I wanted. Okay, get myself in the camera here. Where's my foot? Yes, so we want to be looking at that region between the hoof wall, the outside here, and also the... Um, where it attaches to the bone so if you can see that bright white area that is the healthy lamina and that's what it looks like and that holds that hoof wall against the bone underneath now we've also got oh and actually i'll just preempt this with saying that if you are a little bit queasy, we do have some um, pictures here which um, you might find a little bit disturbing. So just be warned, there could be some in here that you might not like. So just, just be warned, they're not too bad. But let me just see here, I'm just going to find, whoops, we've gone past it. So in this picture, we can actually see, this was a horse that actually did have laminitis. And so what you can see on the screen there of the picture with the um, 
the the underside of the hoof you can see that the bone you can just see that bit of redness that's the bony column pushing down and you can see the um picture of the and the hoof with uh being removed from that bony column you can actually see the lamina and those are those little stripy sort of red areas and that that's actually the lamina so that's what we're talking about when we talk about laminitis and it's that connection between the pedal bone which is sometimes called the coffin bone sometimes just called p1 and the actual hoof wall when that gets inflamed it can that coffin bone um, can actually rotate and tip downwards and pull apart from and making a gap between the hoof wall and that bone the gap widens often we see that a lot of the signs mainly in the front feet it can also occur in the hind limbs and we have to remember this is a massive welfare issue just think of the last time you might have got your thumb you hit it with a hammer or you jammed it in the door you know it is so painful and that's exactly what these horses are going through when they have a bout of laminitis. So it's absolutely imperative that you consider their white welfare and you make sure that you're doing the right thing and treating them and hopefully actually preventing it in the first place. So this just explains how we get that rotation. And we can see with the, the nice hoof wall on the, um, the right of your screen, you can see a little bit of gas, which is that lighter colored um, area. That's actually because the lamina is starting to, to stretch and it's starting to have gas pockets develop in that area. So that's a sure sign that we've got laminitis happening. Okay, now if we get on to the what are the actual signs of laminitis and I guess we all are quite aware of the pony or the horse that leans back onto its haunches and is terribly uncomfortable this is probably the most recognizable sign, but what we actually want to make sure is that we recognize the subtle signs that your horse might be starting to suffer from laminitis. So it's incredibly important that you do learn to recognize these signs. And one of the first things that we do is we actually want to learn and recognize how to take a digital pulse. I tried to get a little video to show up on here and unfortunately I failed. So you'll just have to look at this picture. But what we're doing is we're checking for a pulse in those in the region of the fetlock there. So when you run your hands down the, the side to the back of their um back, to the back of their actual um fetlock there where the sesamoid bones are if you run it sideways like so, oh, thanks, Belinda. That's lovely to hear. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, when you start, you push your fingers against that area and you just rub it slowly like that, you'll often feel three vessels, and that's the vein, artery, and nerve. And practice touching that area, push in quite firmly. I always say to push firmly and then slowly release until you feel the pulse develop. The thing is, is, if you push too hard, you actually won't feel anything because the pulse, you, you block off the, you know, the blood pressure. So you've got to move backwards. And also don't, just remember, never use your thumb because your thumb has a pulse too. So you might be going, is it the horse or is it my thumb? So that's one of the first things that you can do. Um, daily. I'd actually recommend you do this daily with those ponies that are prone to laminitis at the moment because it's um, it's one of those quick signs that you might notice first rather than noticing subtle signs of lameness. So remember um, some of those subtle signs of lameness could be you know they look like they're walking on 
a hot tin roof, you know, they're like picking their feet up a little bit funny. Um, but often you don't, that, that's sort of down the line a little bit. Sometimes it's they're walking okay, but maybe they're just turning a little bit funny. So if you put them on a tight circle and you're turning them around yourself, you might just notice that they're a little bit ouchy and they move that head a little bit like this. So just if they're doing that, then definitely check their digital pulse and make sure that you can recognize whether that is bounding. So all horses have got a digital pulse, but when they have laminitis, it will bound and it will, you know, it will be like this big feeling. So make sure you check now, learn what normal is. Hopefully your horse doesn't have laminitis and then you can recognize the signs when they potentially might be having a problem with laminitis. And of course, even if, they might not actually have laminitis. They might have a hoof abscess. So this is one of those key things that um, it's a diagnostic um, tool that we have in our little kitty. It's easy. You don't need any um, assistance with it. You don't need to have anything else but your two fingers. So always check your horses with that. The other thing that you might notice, and again, this is something, you know, you might just see it when they're having, when they're grazing, is that they're just shifting weight a little bit. And that's a common sign right in the early times um, before they um, get too bad. And of course, we've got the rocking back on their haunches. And then of course, they might be lying down more than usual. And so those are all the signs that your pony or your horse might actually have a problem. So what are the main causes of laminitis? Now this is quite important because a lot of the horses, so we break them down into sort of um, this talk I'm going to concentrate mainly on the endocrine causes and those are things that are caused by your metabolic syndrome, so that's equine metabolic syndrome, and we're basically talking about insulin dysregulation when I'm talking about that. We also have other endocrine disorders such as PPID or Cushing's disease, and that can predispose to laminitic conditions and flare-ups, and that's all related to cortisol type issues. We've also got to realize that these endocrine conditions, particularly insulin dysregulation, is often related to grass. And that's why we have the problems with, you know, the little fat ponies and the ingestion of lush, rapidly growing grass at this time of year. The second type of cause we, we see with laminitis, is that related to inflammation? And these are sort of our horses that are usually, um, they're usually not these ponies, they're usually, um, you know, a horse or, and when I'm talking about the ponies, I just mentioned it's usually those British type breeds, you know, the Shetland ponies, the Welsh mountain pony, the Welsh cob, you know, all those types of ponies are far more prone to laminitis than um, some of the other bigger horses, like your thoroughbreds and everything like that. Now, the inflammatory type cause of laminitis is often caused by things like gastrointestinal disease. So if your horse gets a really bad colic and maybe combined with sepsis, so they might have a strangulation, strangulating colic, they might have severe diarrhea, perhaps a pneumonia, um, and also with breeding mares, like with our um, retained fetal membranes, that can actually lead to laminitis um, due to that sepsis process and that inflammatory mediator situation, which actually causes um, inflammation of those that lamina. Now also remember there's compensatory laminitis as well and those are the conditions that we see when we have a really bad injury to our horse so perhaps they've broken a leg, um, they've got um, a fractured say pedal bone or a fractured cannon or paston and they're confined 
they're standing all day and they can't put weight on that foot, that leg. So they're putting all their weight on their other legs and that um, causes a compensatory type weight bearing type laminitis. But in today's talk, we're just going to concentrate mainly on the ones related to endocrine disorders because that's the one that we see particularly at this time of year. And so we'll just go on with that. And as I said, so the predisposing factors for this type of um, laminitis, mainly equine metabolic syndrome. And that's just the fancy term for a horse that can't regulate its insulin it's usually obese. As I said, we've got our British breeds, our cobs, our um, Welsh ponies, that sort of thing. So they are really, really, really high risk for this type of laminitis. Um, Cushing's disease will often do it as well, as I said before. We've also got to remember that if a horse has had a previous bout of laminitis, they tend to be more prone to future bouts of laminitis. So always keep a really close eye on those guys. Also, any horse that has got poor hoof conformation, you know, really long toe, heels that are really, really long, heels that have pushed forward, um, if, where the sole and the frog and everything is completely off the ground and there's no proper loading, that can be a predisposing factor to like, laminitis. Um, and so it's incredibly important that we actually re have regular consultations at, with our farrier, get them out. Some horses are going to need at this time of year three to six week trims. It's just a fact of life and you're going to have to budget for it. Um, you know, it's it's just one of those things. And if you've got a small pony, these, tr these trims aren't necessarily too hard to actually um to actually do learn how to do yourself so that could be a way to get around especially if they, your pony is needing lots and lots of trimming other risk factors of course obesity and of course inactivity how many of us have ponies that sit in the paddock a lot and maybe the child just rides it every they might ride it every day but how many of them actually work up a sweat how many of those ponies are actually doing work that actually makes them work? <laughs> so um, I would say there aren't too many. So we need to work on that. And I'll touch on that later. But a lot of them are very unfit. Um, and also at this time of year, sometimes because the weather's suddenly improved, we also go out and we decide we want to ride them a bit more. 